my name is Nikki and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you have seen the first video that I posted this is the second video in my series and I want to discuss a bit of breathing with you today essentially so pranayama as we call it in yoga pranayama is one of your eight limbs of yoga and indeed forms a very important part of your yoga practice and what I love about pranayama in particular is as with a lot of yoga principles is how it can be carried over into different aspects of your life quite successfully so there are three different pranayamas that i would like to share with you today that i find very useful myself and so i think may be of use to you i hope so so i'm going to zoom you out first of all just to kind of go through the regular yoga breath so breathing in yoga is very important and we focus on the breath throughout so in yoga we want to breathe into the belly so the best way of kind of practicing this is to place your hands on your belly with your middle fingers touching sort of over the belly button and then inhaling through the nose we expand that belly and push it outwards and you feel those middle fingers moving away from each other and then exhaling we move that belly button back towards the spine and feel those middle fingers coming back towards each other to touch again so inhaling exhaling inhaling belly breathing creates space for the lungs to inflate to let more capacity to fill with oxygen and then as we move that belly button back towards the spine we decrease the space and the lungs can empty instead of the shallow breath where we don't use the entirety of our lungs we are wanting to breathe fully lots of oxygen and all that oxygen can be sent to all parts of the body and it's needed so the first pranayama is ujjayi or victorious breath it's also referred to as the ocean breath because of the sound that it makes and this breath is used extensively in vinyasa yoga which is a style of yoga that i really enjoy teaching um, and it's a very heating breath it's also very valuable with regard to creating stability in the body and making our movements safe and reducing the mechanical stress or the mechanical load onto the spine so the way that we perform this breath is if you could imagine or remember when you were a small child and you're on a long car journey and you breathed onto the car window and you missed it the window up and you maybe drew some pictures into the fog that so it's almost a slight closing of the throat reducing or restricting the airflow but all we do is we close the mouth and we do that through the nose So it creates a kind of almost a roaring uh, no, noise and you can actually see where the term ocean breath comes from because of the noise that, that you make. So in yogic terms, the ujjayi breath connects all three bandhas or seats of energy in the body. So this is a very useful breath, um, as I said, to practice during your vinyasa flow, particularly in moments where you are doing a difficult or more challenging pose, or if you're having to hold it perhaps for a little bit of a longer time and the muscles are rebelling. It's just doing that deep inhalation, exhalation with that restricted flow, hear that roaring. It is extremely helpful. I actually use it quite a lot myself when when lifting weights or performing 
different strength exercises, particularly the last few reps where it's getting a little bit tough to get through. Try a little bit of your ujjayi breathing and I think it will definitely help. The second pranayama is bastrika or breath of fire. So as its name would suggest, it's an, this is an extremely heating breath. We tend to perform this in the beginning of our practice as essentially a type of warm up. It's fantastic for activating your very deep lying abdominal uh, muscles, your deep core muscles, which I will discuss at length in later videos. Um, it kind of wakes them up and switches them off. In yogic terms, this pranayama raises the kundalini energy and balances the nervous and circulatory systems. It is quite a tiring uh, technique to, to practice. So it's something you want to kind of build up on and sort of build up to about three minutes. You'll see how difficult it is if it is the first time that you have done this. So I'll zoom out now and just demonstrate it. So the Bastrika breathing technique. Begin in the beginning, uh, in the beginning, just place your hands on your belly just so that you can kind of feel the movement. It's essentially a, a pumping of the uh, belly or the um, abdominal muscles. Try and keep the shoulders still. I see a lot of people in the beginning sort of breathe like that. So just try and keep the, the top half of the body independent from the bottom half. So it does take a bit of practice and it is a quite tiring technique. So just build up gradually, um, as we said, sort of up to three minutes. So place the hands on the belly, inhale through the nose, nice deep breath, and then exhaling in a pumping motion. Exhalation is very strong and very forced. The inhalation is completely passive. It just happens automatically. Okay, so try again. Inhaling, exhaling. If you feel you're getting a little bit lightheaded, you can take a breath or take a break rather. Just rest the hands on the knees, close the eyes, breathe in and out of the belly, and then start again. So you can, you know, split up into, into sort of three different rounds if you like. So one of the applications for the bust, uh, bustrika or breath of fire outside of your yoga practice is to perhaps insert it into your warm up on a day that you're doing a lot of core work or abdominal strength training, it really activates and wakes up those deep muscles so that when you do start to train them, they're working as they should. So the third pranayama is Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. So Nadi Shodhana is it's an extremely powerful breath and a very beautiful breath to perform. Short harbor it brings prana or energy to the central meridian. It is a pranayama that we perform before we do our shavasana at the end of our yoga practice. And what it does is stimulates the two nadis or energy channels of the body. We have our ida and Pingala Nadis. So Ida Nadi, the left nostril, it's the feminine or moon energy. The Pingala is the right nostril, the male or sun energy. And by stimulating both of these energies, we create balance in the body. So sometimes when we do, uh, when we do practice yoga, we inadvertently will create an imbalance within the body. So this is a very good way of re-establishing that balance before we move into our final meditation. So these two nadis, Ida and Pingala, 
sort of sit coiled up at the base of the spine. And when we stimulate them and when we stimulate that flow of energy, they move up that central meridian channel, up the spine, in a spiral motion, in an alternating helix, almost like your double helix of the DNA. So they spiral up and around the spine and exit out the top of the head. These two channels cross each other at each chakra. So starting from your root chakra all the way up Practice. Lean Nadi Shodhana. So we take our right hand and your index and middle fingers. Because I want you to relax when you're performing this breath, which you do sitting upright. Relax the shoulders. So if the arm gets a bit heavy, you can be supported with your elbow with your left hand. So place the index and middle fingers of the right hand onto the forehead third eye chakra just between the eyebrows here your thumb is used to close off the right nostril and then your ring and baby fingers are used to close off the left nostril so we begin by closing off the right nostril with the thumb inhaling through the left nostril close off that left nostril open the right exhale through the right Inhale through the right. Close off that left, right nostril rather. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close off that left nostril. Exhale through the right. Inhaling through the right. Closing that off, exhaling through the left. So you can do sort of 10, 20, 30 rounds of this breath. And what is important is to make sure that the inhalation and exhalation on both sides are equal in length. As we said, we're wanting to bring back or restore balance into the body. So if we use five seconds inhalation on the left, it's five seconds exhalation on the right, then five six seconds inhalation on the right, five seconds exhalation on the left, and so on. But follow the rhythm of your own breath. So it may not be five counts, it may be four, it may indeed be longer. Follow the rhythm of your breath, listen to your body, make sure you are breathing into that belly, and afterwards, and indeed, with Bastrika breath and with your Nadi Shodhana breath. When you have finished your rounds, close your eyes, rest your hands on your knees, breathe in your normal belly breath, and just observe the body. And notice how you feel. Notice how you feel in your mind. And notice how you feel physically as well. The importance of listening to your body cannot ever be overstressed. So begin to learn about your body and about yourself. So I hope you found that of some interest and of some application and of some use. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care and stay safe. Cheers.